Morning. We'll begin with presentations, starting with Council Member Rosendahl. Well, good morning, Mr. Cardenas, Mr. President. As we start this council meeting today, um, there is a conference about to begin um, in our region, uh, and I want to announce it and welcome these folks to the city. It's the 2005 días, International Drug Policy Reform Conference. The Drug Policy Alliance is one of the leading organizations in the United States promoting alternatives to the war on drugs. The Drug Policy Alliance envisions a just society in which the use and regulation of drugs are grounded in science, compassion, health, and human rights in which people are no longer punished for what they put into their own bodies, but only for crimes committed against others, and in which the fears, prejudices, and punitive prohibitions of today are no more. Their mission is to advance those policies and attitudes that best reduce the harms of both drug misuse and drug prohibition, and to promote the sovereignty of individuals over their minds and bodies. The Drug Policy Alliance will hold the 200, 2005 International Drug Policy Reform Conference at the Weston Hotel in Long Beach, beginning tomorrow, Thursday, November 10th and ending on Saturday, November the 12th. This year will be the largest assembly of national and international drug policy experts in history. More than 1,000 people from across the country and from across the world will gather to learn more about drug policy reform issues, including representatives from 30 or more reform organizations. I would like to introduce 
Comisiones de Reformas y Expertos de Reformas de Análisis Comisiones a journalist and a documentary uh, filmmaker. Uh, he will then introduce others. Since the 60s, his book, Drug Craze, How Did We Get Into This Mess and How Can We Get, get, get Out of It, helped spark syndrome. the current re-examination of America's 90-year war on drugs. He will also be introducing other members who will be at the conference. And my colleagues, you know I have taken a strong position on the war on drugs. These are bad laws in the 80s that have criminalized health issues, and, saben, and we have approximately 2 million people in prison, of which 600 to 800,000 of them are there for drug use and abuse. We need to change our policies. We need to be, be building more schools rather than more prisons. And we should be supporting families and community in more helpful alternatives to incarceration. I'd like now to introduce him, and he'll introduce the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilman Rosendahl. I appreciate that. Uh, I want to introduce my colleague, take a bow, Alberto Mendoza, who is the local representative of the Drug Policy Alliance here in Los Angeles. Alberto. Uh, Thank you for coming. Uh, when I began the research back in 1992, the six years of research that led to the book, uh, Drug Crazy, uh, I was advised by uh, some of my best sources that if I wanted to get the big picture on the war on drugs, I should attend the upcoming conference in Washington, D.C. of the Drug Policy Alliance, which was then called the Drug Policy Foundation. And that conference turned me around completely. Uh, I was trained as an engineer in Engineering, so I'm interested in the facts. So I met over that three-day period some of the smartest people I've ever run across. Physicians, professors, police chiefs, lawyers, lawyers judges, city officials, and healthcare professionals from all over the world. Uh, they all had one thing in common. They had come to believe that the war on drugs was a disaster. Today, that ivory tower conclusion has seeped Ahora, into the general consciousness. Um, we conducted a survey recently, just two weeks ago, here in the Los Angeles area. In one district, we found that 85% of the respondents agreed that the drug war has failed. The only problem is nobody knows what to do about it. So, this year, the Drug Policy Alliance as the Council says, has assembled the largest fracasado. policy conference este in history. And es that will be the focus for the next four days. How do we get out of this quagmire that we grande. have created? Fortunately, we're privileged to have a couple of people here who are experts that will be attending the Tenemos conference. And uh, Lieutenant Jack Cole, Cole, who will take uh, just a few minutes to give you a quick snapshot of the Jack view Cole from the front lines. lines. And uh, attorney Roger Goodman, who will uh, explain a, where he thinks we're headed. Del, Detective guerra, Lieutenant Jack Cole drogas, retired el, after 30, 26 years with the New Jersey State Police and half of that time Jack working Cole undercover narcotics. He is now the executive director of law enforcement against prohibition. The uh, 3,500 member organization of former police chiefs, officers, prosecutors, and judges are all calling for an end to drug prohibition. Roger Goodman directs the Drug Policy Project at the King County Bar Association in Seattle, where he leads a partnership of professional and civic organizations, now laying plans for a cheaper, more effective, and more humane alternative to the current drug policy. Lieutenant Cole. And Lieutenant Cole. Thank you, Mike, and uh, thank uh, the council for allowing us to speak. I am Jack Cole, uh, and uh, Jack Cole. I am the executive director of LEAP, but let me give you just a little snapshot, a quick summary of what we've done in the war on drugs so far. You know, the war on drugs has been raging now for 36 years, the longest war in the history of the United States, and during that time, we spent over a trillion dollars on this war. And all we have to show for it is basically that we've arrested and imprisoned and destroyed the hopes and futures of generations of our young people. We at least believe that this has to stop. We believe that we would be much better off if we ended drug prohibition just like we ended alcohol prohibition in 1933. Overnight, we put Al Capone and all his cronies, smuggling cronies, out of business. We could do the same thing with the drug lords today. And if we take the profit motive out of this, 
jefes de las drogas en el día de hoy. Y si terminamos todos, no habrán gente matándose en las esquinas para controlar el mercado. La verdad When you create prohibition, it doesn't make the drug better, and it doesn't make less people use the drug. It does two things. The first thing it does is it creates an underground market for these drugs that are illegal. That is instantly filled with criminals. And because the drugs are now illegal, the second thing it does is it creates an artificially inflated value for these drugs, a value that is so huge that between where the drugs are, are produced and where they're sold, well, that value can increase by over 17,000%. Eh, eso puede aumentar hasta por 17 mil. Y lo que me presento a ustedes es cuando ese tipo de ganancias está haciendo. Se puede mandar ejércitos de policías y nunca podrán arrestar a todas las personas que están involucradas. Si un policía they took someone off the street that made our community safe for all of us. But when I arrested somebody for selling drugs, all I was doing was creating a job opening for hundreds of people more than willing to take that uh, chance in the future. So we came together as LEAP and, uh, three years ago, and we went from five founding members to over 3,500 members today. We started with just cops. Today we have cops, judges, prosecutors, uh, prison wardens. We even have FBI agents and, and uh, DA agents who help make up our speakers bureau of 100 speakers. We've given 1,400 talks around the United States in the last two years. And the vast majority, I mean the vast majority of the people we speak to agree with us that we need to end drug prohibition. So what I'd just like to leave you with is, uh, Roger is going to tell you some things about possible things that you can do if you would like to work with us to try to lessen some of these evils. But while you're, while you're thinking about doing that, keep in mind that, as I say, the vast majority agree with us. We start going to law enforcement conventions last year. We've been to 12 of them, we've talked to over 1,200 police officers on a one-to-one -one basis, and 80% of those folks, after we speak to them, agree with us. Only 6% of them want to continue the war on drugs. And the same thing works with politicians. Last August, I attended the uh, National Convention of State Legislators in Seattle. We spoke to 450 state legislators and their aides up there. 86% of them agree with us. Only 4% want to continue the war on drugs. So what I'm trying to say to you is the public is ready for this. Thank you. Mr. President, members of the City Council, and particularly uh, Councilman Rosendahl, thanks for the brief opportunity to address you. My name is Roger Goodman from Seattle, King County Bar Association. Greetings from the Pacific Northwest. I'm actually here to give you some hope. Uh, the fact that the war on drugs is a failure is not a news item. Everybody knows this. But people are clamoring for what do we do instead. And for years now in King County and in Washington State, we've been documenting, first of all, how current drug policy has not reduced problematic drug use, has not reduced by any means crime related to drugs, has not reduced public costs arising both from drug abuse and crime, has in fact promoted more crime, as Jack Cole was just talking about, has eroded public health, compromised civil rights, made corruption much too easy, clogged the courts, which is how the Bar Association got involved in the first place, uh, made our children uh, much more at risk than they should be, uh, and wasted a whole bunch of money. And on the international uh, level, of course, destabilized foreign governments and polluted the environment. This is a terribly flawed policy, but there is hope, as I say. We're not just complaining about the system, we're now working on constructive, workable alternatives to drug prohibition. I have here a list of about 25 things that the city of Los Angeles could do today without any changes in statutes that would improve uh, public health la ciudad de Los Ángeles que ayudarían con la salud pública, que protegen a nuestros hijos, que 
nos protege contra el crimen y la falta de orden lo que le hago, y lo que hago es invitar a ustedes a trabajar conmigo ahora estoy trabajando con muchas ciudades Miami-Dade, La Sabana, Hartford, Connecticut uh, y muchas otras ciudades y están respondiendo uh, ellos igual que espero que respondan uh, ustedes uh, para dirigirnos más constructivamente con respecto a la policía. When we take a look at drug policy, la, we affect fiscal policy, we affect family policy, drogas. we affect health policy, Cuando we affect criminal justice policy, las, uh, and we can improve public order and protect our children better uh, lo que by taking es, a turn around. There's a, there's a proverb, no matter how far down y, the wrong road you've gone, podemos, turn around, turn around. And it's time for us to turn around, but I invite you to work with me and to work with us to help Los Angeles improve its public safety and public health and protect its children. Con Thanks for the opportunity. Con nosotros. Well, thank you all very much um, for listening um, to um, um, the folks who have come to town nosotros. to talk about this issue. Muchas it's gracias. a very significant issue. It is a public policy issue. And we should be talking acerca de, acerca about this at every asunto. level of government. The bad laws este of the 80s need to be repealed. Los, we shouldn't be uh, building the uh, criminal justice uh, industrial uh, situation more pressure prisons, more prison guards, no, we should be dealing with this uh, in a much more uh, enlightened way. So I welcome you all to Así que Los Angeles area, and I present you this petition presento. and this citation saying the city of Los Angeles welcomes you, and on behalf of the city council, we extend our warmest wishes and hopes that you will visit us again soon. Congratulations on that. Le damos nuestros mejores deseos y esperamos que nos vean a visitar muy pronto. Muchas gracias. Welcome to the city of Los Angeles. Bienvenidos a la ciudad de Los Now we have uh, Council President Padilla for a special presentation. Ahora tenemos al concejal Padilla que nos va a dar una presentación Thank especial. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you, Bill. You. Council President Padilla. Concejal Padilla. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Muchas gracias, uh, señor presidente. Want to take this opportunity to. Uh, Recognize a couple of people who I think had the night of their lives last night. Uh, two new individuals who are going to be joining this horseshoe. But before I introduce them, just to answer a legal question that I've been asked about 40 times this morning, uh, we're not going to be swearing in. Uh, Herb no, Wesson no or Jose Huizar this morning because the situations, the legalities are a little bit different uh, than it was for Bernard Parks when he was elected Park to fill the vacancy in the 8th Council District. His council has already taken a step of calling for the special election. Uh, so we don't have the option of turning right around and appointing them, even no though the outcome of the elections ellos, uh, are pretty clear. And even though their uh, swearing in is imminent, we're going to take a couple of weeks, allow the county to certify the elections. Uh, and then I think the Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday after claro, the Thanksgiving holiday, uh, we're going to be swearing in our two new members of the city council and uh, completing this horseshoe back to its uh, real number at 15. Y para uh, completar the nuestra herradura legal aquí right en el concilio uh, a los 15. Second, Estoy esperándolos porque uh, verdaderamente uh, van a entrar en cualquier momento del salón de la prensa de atrás. Thank you, Mr. Zayn. Gentlemen, please welcome the new council member elect for the 14th district, Jose Huizar. Council member elect of the 10th district, Herb Wesson. So 
wanted to uh, colleagues Entonces, I know they need no introduction around this horseshoe these are uh, both gentlemen that we've worked with cámara, uh, for years now in the state legislature and the school board respectively uh, and are no strangers to this council de los, chambers because of the intergovernmental collaboration escuelas, uh, that's taken place uh, uh, but it is my honor to welcome them uh, to this horseshoe to congratulate ocurrido, them los, and uh, to say on behalf of our body that we look forward to y'all getting sworn in because Eight out of 15 is tough enough sometimes. Try eight out of 13. Uh, when we're a little short-handed here, uh, we have to uh, pick up the, the workload uh, because of the vacancies that we've had. But we can't think of two individuals that would be stronger, uh, representatives of those districts. Uh, two individuals are going to be more team players uh, and two individuals that are also prepared uh, to come into this horseshoe and help move the business of Los Angeles forward on behalf of the people of Los Angeles. I want to congratulate both of you and uh, ask you to say a few words. Herb? and go alphabetical order. <laughs> is, always like. is it always like this? Well, thank you very much. Muchas and first and foremost, I want to give a big congratulations to uh, uh, former Speaker of the State Assembly and uh, Council Member elect Herb Wesson, Herb Wesson who I know who's shown tremendous uh, leadership throughout the state. I look forward to working with him on the Council. Uh, I want to thank Council President Alex Padilla and Mayor Antonio Villaregosa for their leadership. I certainly look forward to working with all of you. And finally, let me say that I'm thrilled to be here. You know, the 14th Council District has been without a council member for the last five months. And I know that I'm ready to work. I'm ready to work with the council members, the community, and all the stakeholders in the city of LA to get things done and get ready to work. But most of all, I want to thank um, the voters last night from the 14th Council District who were willing to, uh, to support me and uh, let us all know that we want a council member of the 14th Council District to, to get ready to get work. And as I look uh, forward to serving with you uh, to get things done, I know that um, coming from the school board, people often ask me, well, you know, Jose, you're leaving education. You know, and education is really, really important for the city and for the school district. And I say, no, I'm not leaving education. I know that the city and the school district have a lot more to do together. No, I'm not going to no lose sight that we know how important no education is, not only for economic reasons, but for more reasons as we provide many of these children opportunities to succeed in life. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, and I look forward to working with my colleagues on the council, and thank all of you for the support you've given me these last few months as we made sure that we got here today and not y in January. Thank you so much. Para asegurarnos y todos a todos ustedes que se aseguraron que eh, llegamos aquí hoy y no en enero. I too want Yo to uh, congratulate felicitar the council member elect of the 14th district uh, Jose Wizar. You did and I guess I just have to say 14, well Jose done. Wieser. Job eh, well dijo, done. Creo que lo que tiene que hacer lo único que puedo decirles muy buen trabajo. I want to give a special thanks, of course, to my dear friend who I've known for a lot of years and who was a big supporter of mine. And I'm so excited about the opportunity of working with him and serving with him again. And that's uh, my friend, your friend, our mayor, Antonio Villaragosa. Mi amigo es amigo, nuestro alcalde, Antonio Villaragosa. I want to thank each member of the city council because it's, it was kind of cool for me to go out on the campaign trail and to say I had the support of the entire city council of Los Angeles. That was a pretty big thing. So I personally want to thank each and every one of you for that support. And of course, I want to thank claro, the, the residents of the 10th district that came out and voted, and uh, especially those who came out and voted for me. I'm very grateful. And we'll, we'll not let you down. And I'm happy to see that uh, I'm going to be sitting uh, next to my nephew, uh, Dennis Zine. And I expect to have Dennis polishing my desk, Dennis, by the time I get here in three weeks. I want it clean. But anyway, I'm excited. 
va a pulir mi escritorio y que lo va a tener limpio para cuando yo llegue. Me agrada mucho enfrentarme a los retos que vamos a enfrentarnos como consejo. Y me agradará mucho servir aquí en esta cámara. That you can never go home again. Well, guess what? The voters of the 10th district brought me back home, and I will not let them down. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Saben que los votantes de el décimo distrito me trajeron otra vez y trabajaré para ellos. Gracias. Concejal Padilla. Congratulations again. Felicidades uh, una vez más. And uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if I can at this time bring señor, forward the mayor of si Los Angeles, the Honorable Antonio Villarragosa, for a very special presentation. Villarragosa, para, porque tiene una presentación muy especial. First of all, if um, Ms. President, I'd nada, si señor like uh, Presidente to be able to say uh, congratulations to both Council Member Weizar and Wesson. Nuevos I think the people of Los Angeles have Weizar spoken, y Wesson, uh, and uh, they've elected two fine uh, representatives. Uh, they bring uh, a great deal of experience uh, to the City Council, and uh, I'm very proud to uh, al Consejo de la Ciudad de Los Ángeles be, to know that we're going to be able to work with them in the future so Herb Wesson and Jose Wizar, congratulations en el futuro. Um, Así que it's indeed an honor to be here Jose today Wizar I'm sorry, can we bring you all up here? excuse me Disculpe. Herb Wesson ¿pudiéramos traerlos a todos ustedes acá? It is indeed an es honor to be here with the council president today mí, uh, to acknowledge the 20th anniversary of Quevea Telemundo 52, um, a television station here in Los Angeles that has been a mainstay uh, in the Latino community and obviously in the Spanish-speaking community as well. Um, when you think about the role of a station like this, it's not just to provide the news, uh, but the no vital information uh, no that the Latino community needs uh, to access services, uh, to know uh, just what their rights are on issues, uh, and to know about issues overall. And so. Uh, this is uh, an important milestone, and tocante, quiero decir en español de que Angeles, si quiero... es un honor estar aquí con el presidente uh, del Consejo Municipal, aquí celebrar, celebrando el 20 aniversario de Quevea Telemundo 52, una organización, una estación de televisión que realmente no nomás es una estación de televisión, uh, sino es un puente para la información, para el acceso a servicios, para una comunidad que realmente sin que vea Telemundo no puede tener y no tiene la, la información necesaria. Y para nosotros aquí en Los Ángeles sabemos también que que vea uh, está contribuyendo mucho a la economía de Los Ángeles, uh, tienen muchos empleados y esperamos que vas, van a tener hasta más uh, y más cubri Cubrimiento, cubrimiento eh, y um, de lo que es uh, la política. Um, también quiero decir que tiene uh, tele, tel, Telemundo tiene un récord de tratar de um, inculcar la idea de, de que la gente puede mejorar su vida y tienen una consigna que se llama Mejorando su vida, que realmente ha sido parte de um, la iniciativa de Telemundo a tratar de dar servicios e información a nuestra comunidad latina. Uh, so, on behalf of the, the city of Los Angeles, I want to acknowledge uh, Telemundo. And, Telemundo. And let me just say something y about Manuel Abud. Uh, Manuel, if you can come up for a second. Abud, uh, um, I, as you know, one of the beautiful things about the talent uh, in this community is that uh, the talent doesn't need an adjective Latino before. Uh, you're a great uh, television 
uh, a news executive uh, that happens to be uh, Latino. Uh, you've done great things here at Telemundo and working with KNBC. And I was with Paula Madison uh, yesterday, by the way, and uh, we're very honored to present this 20th anniversary uh, acknowledgement and recognition of uh, Telemundo's important role uh, in the Latino community. Telemundo uh, en la comunidad latina. Muchas gracias. gracias uh, Manuel, de parte del Consejo, también quiero felicitar a uh, la estación uh, KBA por su aniversario y todo el éxito que hemos visto uh, sobre los 20 años de existencia uh, de una estación local, uh, verdaderamente local, con pocas horas aquí y allá de programación. Uh, cuando comenzó en el 85, uh, la estación que vemos hoy, una uh, estación uh, importante para la cadena de Telemundo uh, en el área número uno del país, aquí uh, los, uh, uh, los residentes en Los Ángeles. Uh, en verdad me alegro y los felicito. Uh, y también a Manuel, porque desde que llegaste, uh, llegaste con el sentimiento, el espíritu de que querían participar en la ciudad de Los Ángeles, de Los Ángeles no nos siendo una estación fuerte, sino en verdad uh, un elemento de la vida cívica, de la vida cultural uh, de los residentes uh, de Los Ángeles por su programación en el noticiero, por su programación, cobertura de, uh, de noticias uh, y todos los eventos uh, donde participan. Uh, es verdad un, uh, una fuerza uh, muy importante en nuestra ciudad y en el país. Uh, colleagues, I just wanted to uh, give Colegas, acknowledgement to yeah, how far the station has come uh, in the last 20 years. If we can all recall, 1985, soon after the Olympics here in Los Angeles, and uh, I think in between the last two Dodgers World Series, it seems so long ago, uh, from a station that was a truly a local station at the time, with a few hours here and there of local programming, news coverage to a station that is uh, now, uh, if it's not the flagship, it should be the flagship for the network de of Telemundo because the Spanish language market in Los Angeles is not only the number one Spanish language market uh, in the United States, but I believe it's the fifth overall market uh, in the United States uh, behind Los Angeles itself uh, and New York and just a couple of others. Uh, Telemundo has done a tremendous job not only in, in the content they provide, but as a uh, uh, carriers of news no from politics to sports and so many other facets of community life here no in Los Angeles and uh, just a nod to Manuel personally I know when he first arrived on the scene here in Los Angeles he made it known very loudly, very clearly very immediately that he was here, that Telemundo was here and they wanted to be a part of civic life in Los Angeles and a part of everyday life for the people of Los Angeles and they have much very much to be proud of. Congratulations. Aquí en la de Los y... Muchas Felicidades. Uh, Mayor Villarraigosa, Mr. President, uh, members of the City Council. Un, un, un momento, Manuel. Uh, tenemos Just miembros del uh, Concilio que quieren decir algunas oh. palabras. Uh, Just we a moment, have several. Uh, Thank you. Uh, several members first of with the Council, council want Perry. to say a few words. La concejal Perry, primero. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Gracias, I just wanted to rise señor. to say congratulations. And no, no, it's no surprise to me that you've received no this recognition yet again. Um, the accuracy of your reporting is uh, uh, legendary. Is and I think I've noted that I often refer uh, others to see your Angeles stories if they want to get it right. Nos, uh, it's impressive, yo, uh, the array of uh, 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 individuals you have on air, particularly the number of females, is also uh, impressive and inspiring uh, to those who view and uh, you know other other uh, entities might want to follow suit and uh, I'm just very proud that you've uh, done this again uh, is this the second year in a row? Yes, congratulations. Uh, Council Member Reyes. Thank you Council President. I just want to rise and congratulate you. As an example of the type of effort you put in the community, just the other week, we were celebrating solids, fundraisers, scholarship, had a whole array of young people. The end of the week, las becas, you were there at 10.30 p.m. You challenged all the elected officials to see who's reading the state to the end. And maybe then you would interview them. But the bottom line is that final. that's the kind of spirit you show. Muchas gracias por todos los esfuerzos. Gracias por lo que han hecho para nuestra comunidad. Y sabemos que la información 
es el poder. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Councilman. Council Member Dennis Zine. Concejal Dennis Zine. Uh, we'll have uh, Council Member Rosendahl. I rise because having had the pleasure of doing television for a long time, public affairs television, um, where people can finish their sentences and finish their thoughts, to see what you've created, which is far superior to the other broadcast signals in empowering people, connecting people, and bringing community and the tube together and making the democracy work is fantastic and congratulations and continue to do what you do and I know you're a leader for the other broadcasters in this city to take a page out of your work uh, and do it on their stations in English. Muchas gracias, senor. Thank you, sir. De su uh, Council Member Garcetti. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Felicidades, Manuel Abud, todos miembros del equipo. Um, for this great honor, and I want to also just reiterate what También folks have said. The quality of your reporting has been extraordinary. I can think of Echo Park Lake as just one example, where you actually helped us do our job, where we knew that there was in Echo Park Lake water that needed to be cleaned up, water that was for the community unacceptable. Sometimes we say those things and things don't get moving as quickly as they can. The moment that it hits, and it's well reported and respectably reported, that happened very quickly. And so on behalf of Echo Park, where I live, I want to thank you for that. And that's one example of countless ones. Um, you've always uh, conducted yourself with extraordinary professionalism, um, and you've covered things that often uh, the media of any language doesn't, whether it's English or Spanish, which I think really sets you apart. Um, I was talking with a very high-ranking um, member of the print media, we'll leave it at that, here in Los Angeles, and asked him where he got his sources of information from. Um, and he mentioned a couple print things, a couple English language El channels, and he, he's Latino himself. And I said, do you watch Telemundo? Do you see the coverage there? Do you, do you look and make sure that you're hearing what the city is talking about? Because sometimes we should be all asking ourselves not what voices are being heard and what's being said, but what is not being heard and who is not here. And that's what you really bring to our, our television and to our living room. So muchísimas gracias por su trabajo y felicidades. Thank you very much. Uh, Council Member uh, Zain. Thank you. I, I kept on stepping out and coming back. Uh, I want to also congratulate you. Uh, so it was a great service for our community of Los Angeles. I also want to acknowledge that uh, our mayor comes here personally to make these presentations, which in uh, the years I've been here is unprecedented. And I want to acknowledge the mayor for taking his time out to schedule to acknowledge the 20 years. Uh, NBC obviously had great vision in mind when they brought you on board to run Telemundo, and you've done a successful job. I know we went out to lunch. We're going to do some more of those. You do a great job. Congratulations. Keep the good work. Obviously, you've got a beautiful crew with you, and they make it happen for the people of Los Angeles. But many, many more years here in Los Angeles, and uh, I want to pass that on from the folks in San Fernando Valley. You have many, many viewers throughout the city, in particular the great San Fernando Valley. So congratulations. Onward to another 20 more years. Thank you. Council Member Gruel. Thank you uh, very much. I wanted to add my uh, congratulations uh, to Telemundo. Uh, it is an incredible station that and NBC that have, I think, broken the barriers across the city in making sure that everyone is represented and, and making sure that we have uh, in Telemundo the kinds of things that Mr. Garcetti spoke about, which is ensuring that people know about issues that are affecting their community. And all too often, uh, stations locally don't cover issues that are happening in people's neighborhoods, which they care about. Um, and it's about what's happening in their parks or their schools um, in their neighborhoods. And Telemundo has had an extraordinary history of providing that kind of information. Um, and as you see today, um, everyone on the city council um, is acknowledging uh, the efforts, no matter where we are in the city of Los Angeles, no matter who uh, we represent. Um, and I was mentioning the other, t other day, we were talking to, to Victor, and one of the great things about having our, our new mayor um, is the fact that I am seeing more and more coverage um, of local issues. So, so thank you, Mayor, too, because you're bringing Spanish language you know, uh, locales, television um, and news reporters alcalde, to say what happens here locally means a lot. Um, and so thank you to Telemundo for no providing that service uh, to those of us in the city that appreciate focusing on um, our quality of life in our neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carnes.
Thank you, Council Member Labanche. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You know, 20 years happened fast. But look what happens how you grow your partnership with NBC and your partnership with Universal, uh, which I'm so proud of because now it touches the world. And the amazing thing about communications in 20 years or in the 35 years, that video camera uh, used to be a film camera. And the film cameras that came down, they used to just be able to shoot till about 1 o'clock. Then they had a process that cut the film and and technology now has that they could run a cable right outside that camera onto a truck and you could tell the world what's going on. And so your technology, your relationship, uh, and how you built your company, how your partnership with NBC, it's only going to go greater to touch more people and influence them. And information is knowledge is power. And that's the greatest thing about communication. So, uh, Mr. General Manager, congratulations, Mr. Mayor, and Mr. President, good to see you all and the, the team from Telemundo. Congratulations, 20th anniversary, sir. Me agrada Thank mucho verlo a ustedes y al equipo de Telemundo. Felicidades. Ok. okay. Manuel, Manuel Abud. Manuel Welcome to the, uh, to the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Gracias, President, Mr. President. Mayor, uh, members of the Senor City Council. I have to tell you that President, I'm uh, completely Alcalde. humbled by the uh, reaction, and I really appreciate it of, uh, of what you just said. Uh, in, on behalf of uh, my team, I, uh, I received this uh, wonderful recognition, equipo, and I sincerely appreciate esta, uh, your support. Este With Council's uh, indulgence, I would like to acknowledge si my team, uh, my uh, Award-winning news team that is uh, that is here with me: uh, Eduardo Quesada, Eduardo Quesada Tony, Romero, Tony Romero, Lucia Navarro, Lucia Navarro Azucena Gomez, Azucena and Dinora Perez. Perez. Thank you very much for being here. And for Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Uh, señor alcalde, señor presidente, miembros del consejo, les agradezco profundamente este reconocimiento. Uh, pero sobre todo agradezco el apoyo que nos han dado durante 20 años de servicio a nuestra comunidad. Han sido 20 años en que hemos estado cerca de nuestra gente, han sido 20 años en que hemos vivido fieles a nuestro lema, mejorando su vida. Como el alcalde lo mencionaba, mejorando su vida es nuestra, nuestro lema, pero más que un lema, es un compromiso con nuestra gente. Es un compromiso que vivimos día a día, estando cerca de ellos, proveyéndoles no solo con información y con entretenimiento, sino también con los elementos para poder mejorar su vida, para poder impactar su vida en forma positiva. Y es algo que hacemos de todo corazón, lo hacemos con mucho trabajo y lo hacemos fieles a esa misión día a día. Members of the Council, we are very proud of 20 years of serving the community in Los Angeles. As the Mayor said, our motto, Mejorando Su Vida, Making Your Life Better, it's our brand. But in reality, it's much more than a brand or a fancy mission statement. It's a commitment to our viewers to provide them not only with the best possible coverage of the news or entertainment, but also with the elements to improve their lives. We take that commitment very seriously and we leave very, very close to our audience. Um, after 20 years, we've gone a long way. We started as a small Spanish language station, independently owned. Now we are part of NBC Universal, uh, General Electric. We are a major player in this market, as you were very graciously acknowledged, and we're very proud of what we have done. We have a state-of-the-art technology. We are the cutting edge of, of, of the broadcasting industry. But above all, I have the best team in the business. And uh, I thank you for all your recognition, but most importantly, I thank you for your continued support in a relentless commitment to serve this community. And I invite you to keep supporting us for about 20 more years. Thank you very much. And so, on behalf of the City of Los Angeles, we'd like to present uh, this recognition of 20 years of service, of 20 years of service uh, to improving the lives of your TV watchers and your community. De parte de la ciudad de Los Angeles, te queremos presentar este reconocimiento por su um, trabajo en mejorando la vida de tantos de sus televidentes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gracias, señor alcalde.
a salir el alarma. <risa> Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, would you like to call the meeting to order, please? Cardinal Scarcetti, Gruel Hahn, Lamont Parks, Perry Reyes, Rosanel Smith, Weinstein, Padilla, 13 members present, and the Quorum, Madam President. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, colleagues will now begin um, the work of the Council this morning. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, first order of business. Approval of the minutes. Mr. Smith moves, Mr. Park seconds. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Uh, Ms. Perry uh, moves. Mr. LeBron seconds. Uh, Madam President, on the regular agenda, uh, items noticed for public uh, hearing. Uh, items one through six are street lighting six, ordinances, either abandoning or confirming the projects. Uh, seeing no specials on yeah, items no one through six, uh, Madam Clerk, six. open the roll. Close the roll. Tabulate the votes. 13 ayes. Those six. items have been approved. Esos Next order of business. Next Next item is Item number seven, and the applicant consents to continuance to November 22nd. That item then will be continued to uh, November 22nd, and the Ms. Sylvia Lynn Hawkins, that item will be continued to the 22nd. Next order. Next items are items for which public hearings have been held. Items 8 through 42, 8, 9, and 10 are confirmations of commissioners. Do you wish to hold those on the desk? Yes, we'll hold item 8, 9, and 10 on the desk. And also in that group, uh, there are requests on item number 38, I believe, Mr. Mr. Zine wishes to refer that matter back to Public Safety Committee. 38. We'll refer that back. And, and uh, people in the room, if we could have just a little bit of quiet. Uh, thank you. So item, item number 38 uh, will be continued, will be sent back to Public Safety. And also on item number 39, uh, request for Mr. Parks to continue that matter to November 15th. Okay, that will be continued to November 15th. And also on item 41, a request to continue that matter to November 18th. That will be con continued to November 18th. And that will be before Council 11 through 42, with the exception of those uh, items 38, 39, and 41 that were acted on. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Special Con colleagues. Special. 33 special. special. Mr. Parks? 42 forthwith after the vote. Okay. Any other specials, colleagues? Special Mr. Colleagues? LeBange? Okay, will we get through those? Okay. Any other specials, colleagues? If not, um, Madam si no, Clerk, open the roll on those remaining si items. Close the roll. Tabulate the votes. Thirteen tabule, Thank you. We've been asked, I think, 35, 36 to go forthwith, as well as item 42. <laughs> Next order of business, Madam Clerk. The next item before Council are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 43 through 67, 10 votes are required for consideration. Thank you. Colleagues, any specials on those items this morning? Yes, Mr. Mr. Cardenas. Item 53 and item 67. Thank you. Mr. LaBange. Mr. LaBange. Fourth with on 25. Any other specials? Any other specials? Okay. If not, uh, Madam Clerk, si no, open the roll on the si remainder of those items. Close the roll. Tabulate the votes. Those items have been approved. Next order, Madam. Aprobados. Next items are 68 through 74. I, I see the position items. Do you wish to hold those on the desk? We'll hold those items on the desk. Uh, do you wish to go back to uh, confirmation of the commissioners? Sí, Please. Uh, uh, item number eight is uh, the audit committee report uh, recommending approval of Jack ocho. Bayless to the Quality and Productivity Commission. Thank you, and I see Mr. Bayless uh, in the room. We had the opportunity to uh, review um, uh, Jack's uh, appointment in Audits and Government Efficiency on Monday, um, and uh, look forward. You can come and sit at the table. I want to thank him for his four years of service uh, on the Audits and Government, or excuse me, on the Productivity Commission. Uh, Ms. Perry. I just wanted Señora to say Perry, how um, fortunate we are to have such a high quality um, uh, individual like Jack una, un um, with his de gran level Jack, of education as an engineer. I won't. Chemical, ingeniero, ¿y qué? Yes, chemical, chemical engineer. 
uh, chemical. He should, uh, and his okay. strong sense of logic, of course, okay. uh, and his background um, in, uh, in dealing with wastewater and getting uh, projects uh, built on a national and probably international basis. I think uh, we stand uh, only no stand to gain by uh, appreciating and uh, having the benefit of his vast experience and uh, the depth of his relationships with so many of us here in the city. Um, I think he was one of the uh, individuals who inspired me more than anyone uh, from the private sector to be committed to developing the river. So I'm uh, very pleased about your appointment today. Thank you, Ms. Perry. Mr. Reyes. Thank you, Madam President. I just rise to support Mr. Bayless. I can share with you, colleagues, that four or five years ago, we had these conversations about what is the role of the river, why we have, we have neglected it. And through his um, political, financial prowess, and being able to lay the issues down, competing in a very direct way, with a good spirit, competir, uh, he maintains uh, a very good attitude about how we can continue to evolve as a city using this river as a spine. I want to thank him for that. But I want to share with you something even deeper. He uses, he works, he leverages his resources to help the youth. Just last year, they had a competition, an art competition that challenged the young people in our city to bring forth este posters on the themes of ecology, river development, neighborhood development, amazing talent we have out there. His company sponsored it. They were able to receive scholarships. So he's achieved many of the critical goals that we try to achieve as a council. And he's doing it on his own. He's the sponsor of his company. So thank you for his hard work. It's great to have an individual like this joining the city family as commissioner as well. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much, Mr. Um, Reyes, for those eloquent words and how important this Productivity Commission is and, and Jack's history here in the city. Um, I don't see any other individuals wanting to speak, so, Madam Clerk, that item is now before us. Open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the votes. 13 eyes. That item has been approved. Congratulations. Thank you for your service. Next item, please. Next item is item number nine, and that's confirmation of this release. Walker to the on the status of women. Good morning. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Uh, we don't have anyone who wants to grill you this morning, so that's the good news. Um, uh, Madam Clerk, the item is now before us. Please open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the votes. Thank you. Congratulations. Now you can get to work. <laughs> Thank you. Next item. Next item is item number 10, and that's confirmation of Mr. Franklin Acevedo to the Central APC. Good morning. Uh, colleagues, we have this item now uh, before us uh, for the Central Area Planning Commission. Mr. Reyes. Yes, thank you, uh, Madam President. First, I want to uh, thank Mr. Savedo for his uh, support of the city. Uh, we have many stars in the city, and I believe Mr. Savedo is one of them. His work in the West Lake area has been tremendous. His knowledge of real estate, of planning, I've seen him work at the grassroots level bringing together the interest groups of MacArthur Park to help sustain services, uh, job development, changing the image, and many other types of he's a pioneer of sorts. Uh, actually, I think one of the first condos, townhouses, conversion buildings off of Wilshire. And on a, on a more, I believe, personal note, um, his family has suffered tragedy in his, in his family because of gun violence. He has seen that pain firsthand. And I think that on top of the fact that he's grown up in the neighborhoods is uh, the type of individual that we need to achieve those balances that create a lot of tension between limited housing, need for open space, education, and addressing the needs of our youth. So welcome, Frank. I'm sorry to see you in Plum, but I've asked for you given uh, the history we've had in the past and I'm hoping my colleagues can see their way of supporting you. 
Just one quick question. From your point of view, what do you see as the biggest challenge in front of the city given the central area commission's role? I think one of the biggest challenges that uh, most of the commissioners in all the area planning commissions will be the uh, uh, affordable housing issue throughout the city and uh, the creation of affordable housing throughout the city. So I look forward to working on those issues uh, together with the other commissioners and with the city council as well. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. Council Member Garcetti. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Muchas Thank you, Mr. Gracias, Acevedo, as well, for putting gracias, yourself forward. Acevedo. And it's great to have somebody who has that experience, especially es, at time of a housing crisis. I wanted to ask you something. I've asked some of the other folks from the, um, the two area planning commissions in my area. I think you're probably best able to answer this of almost anybody who's uh, been forward. What's your opinion on one-to-one on -one parking ratio for affordable housing, whether or not that results in a worse parking situation for the neighborhood versus a two-to-one at market rate in your experience? I think the parking ratios that the city has currently need to be uh, looked at once again. Um, I think the one-to-one -one ratio specifically uh, isn't really working for our communities, especially in those communities that are very dense. Um, I've seen firsthand the effects that uh, the lack of parking in our communities uh, has affected the communities themselves. Um, the lack of parking creates tension amongst neighbors. Uh, the lack of parking creates tension amongst homeowners. Um, and it also is a blight on the community when you have uh, far too many cars los, uh, in a neighborhood. Uh, I think it's very important that we address casa, the parking issues through the, uh, throughout the city and that whenever a developer comes forward to propose any sort of development uh, addresses the parking issue in a creative way um, and in a way that uh, is well balanced for the members in the community. Thank you for those answers. For what it's worth, our experience has been that on affordable units, that uh, a one-to-one -one ratio actually is less of an impact, though it may uno, have an impact uno, o sea, in some cases, than a two-to-one at market rate. That at market rate, folks who can afford at market rate will sometimes have two or three cars. Um, you know, on average, you'll have slightly less than a car per uh, entity in, in affordable units. And I know you have experience with those affordable units. So if we can share that perspective, because oftentimes there's a lot of fear that if it's an affordable housing thing versus a market rate, that that, that parking thing alone will kill the project. When in reality, th there is really a need to get that affordable housing. And I know that you, you know that from your experience. So, I think the, um, uh, the fact that the de demographic that affordable housing is serving uh, is generally low-income families. I think they're the biggest users, if not the main user, of public transportation. And uh, with public transportation uh, mitigation uh, methods, I think that there are ways to resolve that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, colleagues. Uh, that item is now before us. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, open the roll, close the roll, tabulate the votes. That item's been approved. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Madam President. Yes, Mr. Lynch. Just uh, a point of information. Uh, Sharon DeLugich, uh, just please stand up and be recognized. The mayor's deputy. Today's her birthday, Sharon. Happy birthday to you and her beautiful family. Thank you for doing a great job bringing these commissioners in. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> thank you, surprised her. <coughs> Madam I'm I'm Clerk, I think we'll now take a public comment. Uh, so if I could call up uh, the following individuals, Belinda Jo Wright, followed by Melrose Larry Green, followed by Felicia Fort. Good morning, council members. Um, I was at a time earlier this year at midnight serenaded by an extremely gifted young rapper. She was from Los Angeles, but she rapped almost exclusively about drive-bys. On Friday night after viewing Jarhead in Woodland Hills, on my arrival home, I took note of a news report about five individuals being shot on 91st and Vermont Avenue. Concerned, I called a detective at the 77th Street Station. He was hard at work at 9 p.m. on Friday evening, and he was interested in knowing what I, what I had been doing that evening, which I told him. The detective was hardened to know that a member of the community was concerned as he was. Dr. King said you can see some strange things at midnight. It's true, but, it, but in light of the day, you can see a lot of young people who need a hand in dealing with the unimaginable, so let's give them a hand. Thank you. Oh, this is Emmett Till. It's a great picture of okay. him. We've come at 50 years. Thank come you very much. Way. 
Larry. Good morning. If you'll indulge me with three minutes of time, I will conquer all my points. We'll start at 8.30. Five, four, three, two, one. Thank you. First of all, congratulations to the Horseshoe and to all the forces who worked so hard during the recent, the recent campaign. Uh, I can tell uh, you, Arnold, camera. losing sucks. Y I've lost enough races over the years. We have to all work together, roll up our sleeves. And congratulations, bueno, particularly to Antonio Villaragosa. I think this, uh, this uh, major victory is, should be a message Antonio to the rest Villaragosa. of the country of the influence of uh, our great mayor, mensaje, and it's a good thing that I happen to like Fabio Nunez and Antonio Villaragosa as people. To Bill Gruel, who was great seeing the other night with Olga Guthrie and UCLA, and it was wonderful. Now for the now that I got Ahora, the preliminaries out of the way, let me tell you why I came here. After a rather rough night of vote counting last night, I wake up to see that San Francisco, Francisco, San Francisco has outlawed military recruiters in the city of San Francisco. I'm sure the Al-Qaeda is watching that. It will be all over Al Jazeera this morning. Secondly, I wake up and I see some people here that want to legalized drugs. Well, that's great. That's great. Look, the the war on drugs, drugs is a waste of money. That is nonsense. I hope all you watching live, I, I like you, Bill, don't worry. Watch the replay. Watch the replay. I can't believe the nonsense that I heard this morning that the drug war is a waste of time and that people go into... I grew up in a drug project in Brooklyn. I didn't grow up with a lot of money. And I worked my way out. Maybe it's not politically correct for a Jewish guy to talk this way, Brooklyn. but I can Quizás relate more to people like Alex no Padilla and Antonio Villaragosa no than to my cousins in Beverly Hills. Judía, so that's the second yo, point. The third point, and this is a very Pero, important point, we important, live in a democracy, and you can't tell people that are homeless, no that are, don't have health insurance, that what happened yesterday is going to get them off the streets, or that what happened yesterday with the defeat of Arnold's initiatives is going to cure the traffic in L.A. or the gang problems in L.A. Republicans are out there, we're all over the country, and we may not have won yesterday, but we're a voice. And I want to congratulate all the Republicans in this city that supported the governor, and I'd like to see more camaraderie between Governor Schwarzenegger and Mayor Villaraigosa. And that Más dreaded guy in Washington, you all hate, who I also voted for, George W. Bush. In other Mayor words, Ragosa Antonio, you pick up the phone in the morning, you say, hi, Arnold. Arnold, this is Antonio. And you get three-way dialing. En, en I have it at home in Hancock Park. We have Bush on Pueden one line and Antonio on the other line, and you have Viragosa on the third line. And you solve the problems. You Arnold, won yesterday. Congratulations. We have a lot of work to do. So yeah. mazel tov, claro, everybody. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can't win them all. Thank you very much, folks. I'm Noel Rose, Larry Green. And I give you my... I know you work very hard. I just wish Antonio was a Republican. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Felicia Ford. Felicia Ford. I'm here to speak with Estoy regards to the cemetery world is rocked with intentional desecration for a profit with confusion, dishonesty, corruption, and misuse of abuse of the highest level of power and authority in Los Angeles, California. Our struggle our labor, is, excuse me, our labor of struggle is long and painful and difficult. We give more than our share in life. We are oppressed at every corner of the land. We are killed all day long and counted as waste. Our loved ones are put to rest with the best dignity one can afford. They are no longer here on earth but memories. Their final resting place is not enough. Those that remain must suffer and continue to pay a cost and fee for those to dig up our beloved ones and throw them in the trash can dumpsters. And re remove their um, burial spaces with dignity and honor. We want to know where our family members are. At Woodlawn Cemetery, Lincoln, Angeles Abbey, Paradise, these are the same players, attorneys. It's a lot of corruption. There's a lot of fraud involved with regards to this. We are going to be holding a meeting here very soon for the family members this week. We are tired of our family members being desecrated. All of you are in a unique position to make a change. And we are asking for help at this time. If help does not arrive, I can tell you, for five and, a long, five and a half long years, I have tried to help a wide range of family members with my foundation and my corporation. And these are a lot of elderly. They have been grieving for a very, very long time. And they want closure. They do not have peaceful closure to this. There will be some news that will be shocking to you with regards to the new issue pertaining to the Cemetery of Grandview. I will break that information this coming week, and I will tell you what really relationship it has with Woodlawn. I thank you for allowing me to speak.
que and I'll be back because there are a lot of issues that I have to give in such a short period of time. Thank, Thank you for allowing me to speak. Cosas, uh, Bruce que Campbell. Tengo que en tan poco por After Mr. Campbell, we'll have our delegation from the South Central Farmers. Y señor Campbell, tendremos la delegación de los granjeros de su, de South Central. Good morning, Council President and Council Members. My name is Bruce Campbell. I'm from South Central, South Central Brentwood, that is. I've been to the community farm five times. I find it the most inspiring 14 acres in this large city. This would be an oasis in any district of the city. It is a botanical, cultural, and nutritional treasure house. Heirloom seeds are mostly used which are healthier, not genetically engineered, and help guard against pests which often target monoculture crops of similar seed stock. Let us consider food alternatives for these 360 extended families currently using the farm. Clearly, the food alternatives in this part of town are bleak, fast food and overpriced corner stores with little fresh produce, and these working poor definitely need help with their food budget. Think of the kids involved, not only would the kids not hear as much about traditional ways of their family elders, but imagine what alternatives await these 1,000 kids or so in South Central. There'd be greater niños, likelihood of obesity, uh, illness, mil, emergency mil room costs, tagging, gang, and criminal activity if there wasn't this oasis South where they Central. can learn about going in balance si and tending no the good existiera. earth. No, also, no the medicinal plants on this land are certainly far superior in most cases to expensive pharmaceuticals with toxic side effects. I believe that the mayor and some of you council members care about workers, but the case of this community farm will determine whether it is just organized labor, making campaign contributions, or whether this concern also extends to the working poor who need to supplement their income by growing their own food and medicine. And please don't use price as an excuse. If one can invest billions and for frivolous activities in proposed yuppie playgrounds on Grand Avenue and Figueroa areas, or spend $28 million on a parking lot to lure the NFL, surely true leadership can find ways to raise the funds needed to purchase this oasis. And there are plenty of other locales for warehouses. This issue is becoming known in democratic environmental justice, organic agriculture, and other sí, circles, while the Environmental Caucus of the California Democratic Party muchos, and West LA Democratic Club have taken clear positions to save this inspirational farm. Lastly, this farm is one of few places in the country which grows corn that is not esta, genetically contaminated, and even the wild maize corn species of Mexico have now been el, contaminated due to NAFTA corn exports. If I can ask you to conclude, el, please, we have other speakers waiting behind you. So uh, thanks for your time, and please do what you can to save no this important asset for our entire city. No Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very much. Our Gracias South Central Farmers, followed by Dr. Daniel Wiseman. Good morning, Council. My name is Vanessa Costa. I'm a friend of the South Central Farmers. Today I am pleading to our Mayor Antonio Villarregosa to please take a moment to reflect and consider the South Central Farmers plea to stay where they are. Today I'm going to read to you a letter that was submitted to, Mr. to our Mayor Antonio Villarregosa with photographs. Dear Honorable Antonio Villarregosa, I am writing you concerning an issue that I am sure you are familiar with the South Central Farmers garden at 41st in Alameda. In the last two years, you have visited the garden several times to wander its path, to pray with the farmers and to receive gifts from their generous bounty. You even took time from your campaign in April to visit when you could have been meeting with more influential voters. It is clear that this place has a special place in your heart for them. Since you were elected, you have been very active in bringing attention to many critical issues in the city faces. I appeal to you to lend your support for this cause. I know this issue is fraught with complexities. However, doing the right thing is hard, but it can't do much to show that you care about those that are on the bottom of our economy. Some say it is in every growing constituency. I appeal to you to honor your words of support you have voiced to this group and use your power to help this community to continue farming. Si se puede. This was written by Donald G. Rogers in some photographs. I 
also want to bring to the attention of the City Council that this past Sunday, there was a non-violent protest meeting at the Guard Rooms, and the presence of police and the fire truck really scared the farmers there, and they were very, con you know, they were, they're very concerned because the fire truck put out its own ladder, and there was police taking photographs or videotaping the area, uh, and I asked them bomberos, uh, what were their uh, uh, presence, what was it, why were they there, and they said that they had to see the area to have an idea of what kind of problems they're going to run into. El, so it scared the farmers, and they are trying to be non-violent protesters. And I'm, de I want to keep this on the record, and I have copies to Quiero give to all the city councils. I also want to say, Ms. Perry, and our mayor and Mr. Horowitz, I would like for all of you to work together with Mr. Horowitz to work together and reconsider your plans for the 14 acres to continue the South Central farmers to allow the South Central farmers to continue with their work about reaching to the community and bringing victory over violence in the CD district, CD district number nine. Thank you. Sobrepasar violencia en la en el distrito número nueve. Pero no tenemos um, intérprete. Unofficial interpreter. She's on her way. Solo uno o dos representantes, por favor, porque además estoy esperando. Buenos. Buenos días. Mi nombre es María Rodríguez. Good morning. My name is Maria Rodríguez. Yo represento a South Central Farmer 41 y Alameda. I represent the South Central Farmers at 41st and Alameda. Solo quiero que nos ayuden a conservar ese jardín. I would only like for you to help us to conserve the garden. No les estamos pidiendo nada más. Nosotros todo lo ponemos ahí, pagamos todo porque nos por mantener todo limpio. That's all we're asking. We stay there and we make or maintain everything so that it's clean and we pay for everything ourselves. The place is like a garden, a park, and everything is very good and it's very clean for our children and everything. Everything is very secure, there's no drugs, there's nothing. That's all, thank you. Buenos días, mi nombre es Edilberta Rodríguez. Good morning, my name is Edilberta Rodríguez. Puedes hablar más y yo te voy a tratar de... Oh, ok. Yo vengo aquí a representar al Jardín del Sur Centro y le pido a Jan Perry que haga el favor. Ella tiene el poder y la manera de cómo conseguir otros acres para la otra persona y que eso, que nos los deje a nosotros. Nosotros todo estamos dando y todo le pedimos que ella también dé algo de su parte. Y eso es todo. Gracias. I come to represent the garden of the farmers at South Central. We're asking Jan Perry to help us. She has the power. She has the way to get the other people. We are all asking for that. Thank you. Dr. Weisman. <laughs> I brought my rooting commitment with me. Good morning, gentlemen, and ladies of the council. Dr. Daniel Weisman. Uh, I'd like to talk about the Orange Line, and I want to direct these comments to those of you council members who have turf along that line. Tom, you started because it starts in your neighborhood, it goes through Wendy's area. It goes through uh, Jack Weiss's area, it goes through yours, uh, Dennis, it goes through yours, Greg. And we've now seen about a week, a little more, of Orange Line activity. It's got some very good positives, it's got some very 
important the negatives. Tiene mucho positivo, uh, through tiene Valley Village, importantes. which I know Wendy is very concerned with, we, have, we still have a serious situation. We need sidewalks along that area so that the Orthodox Jewish community can go to services on Saturdays and on service days without having to walk in the street and take the hazard of being hit by a car. I'm a physician, as you know. My job when I started practicing in this valley in 1975 included going to every emergency room and picking up any child who was injured, drowned, hit by a car, who didn't have a doctor and get care for them immediately. I do not want to see one child, one adult, hit by a car. We need to get together some money, Wendy, and get some sidewalks built there. We're working on it already, but I want it made public here at this location. I look forward to working with you on that. The Orange Line has already had one serious accident where a lady ran through a red light, maybe didn't see it, whatever happened. Murphy's Law took over and the accident that occurred. She and a dozen people were injured, potentially six dozen people on that particular bus were hurt. We have to find a way to make every one of those intersections safe. People are talking about uh, putting down the uh, kinds of barriers that we see at all of our train tracks. But if so, they're going to have to go not only on the north-south streets that cross those orange lines, they're going to have to go on the east-west openings of those orange lines so people cannot, cannot drive their cars. I'm going to make a confession because you didn't see it and I don't think any policeman did. I've watched that orange line for three years now, before it was built, during its building, and now that it's open. As much as I knew about that orange line, as much as I knew the, tra the traffic, as much as I knew all the details of the plans, I drove my car on the orange line by mistake. If people who know the orange line can do that, then people who don't know the orange line are far more likely. Wendy, Jack, Dennis, Greg, Tom, we need to get something that will make that line secure and safe for everybody driving past it driving by it and walking by it. I hope you will put this on your agenda. I hope it can be brought to your committee, the Transportation Committee, and we'll start talking about that again this afternoon, uh, and see if something can be done to make that orange line what it really should be. A beautiful line that's as pretty as what uh, Burbank una, has, una especially where it goes through bella, Mr. LaBange's area in Burbank, North Hollywood. That's coming along. It isn't there yet. It should be. It should be a beautiful green space. It should be a space where people can walk, ride their bicycles, enjoy the, the fresh air, and get from one end of the valley to another safely. I look forward to working with you on it, and thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. Our last speaker will be Irene Casmer. Uh, con seguridad. Nuestro último parlante va a ser Irene Kasler. Good morning, honorable Buenos council uh, members. I'm sorry to be late, I consejo. guess, because of the rain, and I came from tarde, far away today. Not too far, but far lejos. away enough to be late. I'm so sorry. Um, I welcome you all today here. And I have not been here a long time, but I was working hard on behalf of Los Angeles. And I'm Irene Kiasmer, and I'm here on behalf of the Museum of Fashion Designers and Creators. And I brought a handout for everyone, and I hope that you read it. And what I'm here about is that we want to honor for the museum Julia Schumann, he is a treasure in L.A., and I hope everybody knows the name. And he gave us a date that he wants to represent the museum. He has a feeling about the museum. He thinks the museum is important. So he gave us a date, uh, November. 29th at Orpheum. He will present his art 
the museum will present some of their art, art and everybody is invited and I gave you a handout that will be given to you today. Please read it and help us put on this big event November 29 at the Orpheum honoring Julia Schumann as a treasure of Los Angeles for documenting historic buildings and other things. And I, uh, you are all welcome. Uh, en el you will be invited officially as soon as our invitation is ready. And I thank you very much. And my greetings and help and happiness to all of you. Thank you. Uh, this concludes public comment for today's meeting. Next item, please. Uh, Mr. President, uh, item number two was adopted previously in the meeting, and there is an amending motion that has been distributed to the council members. Do you wish to reconsider it to adopt the item as amended? This is item 22. Mr. Zayn moves reconsideration. Let's uh, open the roll on reconsideration. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. That is now back before us. We do have that amending motion. Uh, yes, and, and it's been distributed to all the council members. Okay, without objection, we'll consider item two as amended. Please open the roll. Close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 eyes. That is approved. Next item. Next item, Mr. President, item number 33 was called special by Council Member Rosendahl. Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, yes, Mr. President, I just wanted to share with my colleagues what this is, instead of just, you know, open the rolls, close the rolls, uh, count the votes, just so people would understand that it's about the veterans' property, and I do want your support. Uh, this is uh, putting more muscle behind our position, and I just want to read three parts of this motion. That the federal government honor and uphold provisions of the Cranston Act prohibiting the sale or enhanced use leases on 109 eh, acres of the West Los Angeles uh, campus. Two, that the federal government honor and uphold the spirit of the, of the 1888 deed granting the land as the old soldier's home by maintaining the land in perpetuity for the direct benefit of veterans. And three, I want to highlight this point, that the federal government officially declare that there is no excess land at the West Los Angeles VA campus. No so I just want your support to preserve that uh, land for veterans' use and veterans' use only. No commercial development on that property in the 11th district. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Rosendahl. Other members on this item? Mr. Lebanche. Mr. Lebanche. Uh, on this effort here, and also the efforts of Mr. Rosenthal, who I believe is the only veteran uh, here, and Mr. Smith, who sits next to him, two veterans right there, thank you very much. This is Veterans Day on Friday. But also this parcel, too, and when I was in committee here before, you know, some people just want to make it a park. I would rather see some development for housing for veterans, especially those veterans who have to sleep in the cold and the rain in the streets of Los Angeles, and make it appropriate. I know what Judge Pregerson did a wonderful job on the uh, east side of the freeway with the Salvation Army on some parcel right next to the San Diego freeway that is a wonderful building. And it's just a little bit al, goes a long way. La, so I stand to support this. No commercial development. But if there could be development for housing apoyar, for veterans uh, of si Los Angeles vivir, who served this country with no honor, I would appreciate it. Esa área, Mr. Pero si para uh, thank you, Mr. Labonge, for that. And I might say, when I was a candidate for office, or before I was a candidate for office, you urged me to run for office, uh, uh, Tom Labonge. You were the first person to suggest I do this from this council. And one thing you said was, remember the veterans on the veterans' property. The good news is there's a 396-bed facility assisted living for senior vets that is being constructed there now. You also, the other good news is New Directions and the Salvation Army have 350 homeless vets with assisted living there. And Councilman Bobby Shriver from my sister city of Santa Monica and I are working on three vacant buildings there to renovate them and house another 600 homeless veterans. Veterans, veterans only. Estamos trabajando en un proyecto que también va a darle vivienda a otros más 300 veteranos sin vivienda. Hay varios edificios que están vacantes, así que esto es para los veteranos, es tierra sagrada para los veteranos y queremos proteger esto perpetuamente. Seeing none, it's open the roll. 
Consejero que quiere hablar con respecto a esto. Vamos entonces a pasar el voto. 13 sí, ha sido aprobado. Item number 53, call special by council member Cárdenas. Que lo pide especial el señor concejal Cárdenas. Thank you, council member. Council President Padilla, can we have the representatives of the Department of Water and Power come forward, please? Representantes del Departamento de Agua y Electricidad. And if we need any Body from the CLA, CEO's office, uh, si city attorney's office, to please be prepared to answer questions. Um, ladies and gentlemen, members of the public, we're talking about a $103 million contract de un uh, that the Department of Water and Power uh, through the board level has decided that they should go through with it. Uh, the um, committee, uh, Commerce Committee, uh, moved it forward to this council with no recommendations. Uh, so I have a series of questions I'd like you to explain to the public about this particular contract. I'd like to um, thank the commission for asking for an audit on the Owens Valley matter, which is this matter. And that, uh, before that audit is uh, uh, finalized as far as the scope of that audit, that it come to council uh, and that we discuss it in the policy committee uh, before the department determines what that audit uh, scope is going to be. We're discussing here uh, a matter that involves the fifth phase of a, what was a $120 million commitment on behalf of the Department of Water and Power, on behalf of the ratepayers of Los Angeles for the Owens Valley dust mitigation. Um, it has now grown with this particular contract, will grow past $400 million since that initial estimate. Uh, we are subject to local authorities that have the ability to demand more of us. Uh, we were subject to those local authorities when this agreement was struck and made uh, on behalf of the ratepayers of Los Angeles via the Department of Water and Power. So with that, I'd like you to explain for the public what are we doing with this contract, what does this contract mean, and what has happened to date in the first four phases before we get to this fifth phase. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Council Member, my name is Jim McDaniel. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the Water System for LA Department of Water and Power. Um, just a little, a little bit of background. I've also got uh, Richard Harrisick here, who's the Program Manager and the expert on the contract, but I wanted to uh, introduce it a little bit. Uh, the city has been ordered by the Great Basin Air Pollution Control District to complete 29.8 square miles of dust control in specific areas of the Owens Lake by December 31st, 2006. To date, we've done 23.1 square miles completed, and those are operational. This $103 million contract would be the last of six major contracts to complete this work on schedule. Para poder terminar um, I'll este have trabajo, uh, Mr. Harrisick uh, 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 go over some of the details for you. So overall, que, what que uh, Mr. Antonio said, detalles. we've done a lot of work out there, and it is working. There's been a marked decrease in the number of days uh, in the area that doesn't meet the air quality and standards. In fact, uh, over the past three years, there's been a 70 percent reduction in uh, air quality incidents, uh, improving the overall air quality. Of course, the question is, but at what cost? Um, and what hasn't cost, uh, what hasn't changed uh, since uh, early July is our commitment to complete that 29.8 square miles for 415 million. Uh, the, initially, the cost um, was estimated to $120 million, and that was for a 22.5 square mile project. And that was reported uh, by the department at the time and, and was before this council. It was reported also at that time, and it was noted that the cost, the schedule, and the total amount of square miles to be controlled may change upon a revised plan by the Air District. And over that time, since 1998, when the city uh, took over responsibility, New information has become available that uh, resulted in the realiz realization that the dust control measures would be more costly than originally thought. That uh, estimate is really not reflective of what actually the requirements ended up to be. The city agreed really to three things. One, that we were responsible for the dust. Two, that uh, we would receive a five-year extension to complete our work, and three, that in 2003, that uh, two, 22 and a half square miles would be looked at and revised. Once we knew that it was 30 square miles, uh, early in 2003, the department locked into that $415 million, and it still stands by that number. Uh, it's in our budget, it was reported to council, um, and we intend to stay that one. Um, 
No one currently on the project en was a part of that no estimate. The estimate doesn't include in such essential items as planning and design and environmental mitigation eh, and those types of issues. Uh, and we ended up using slightly different technology than what was estimated. So the construction contract before us today is, as you said, is the final phase of construction to get us to that last mile of the 29.8 square miles. So this contract is a contract Pero to implement este contrato, some engineering. Entonces, este contrato, is not being, the engineering is not being done by this o sea, company. The engineering no has already been done, so they basically bid to do the work as described. This is just a hard, hard bid, low price contract. Hacer, they come in with a bunch of big equipment and construct it. Sí. Okay. Uh, now, what kind of penalties are in this particular contract should this particular company not meet the deadline? Because we have si consequences no if we don't meet our deadline. I think we have no a deadline of December 31st, 2006 to meet our 29.8 miles of mitigation, and these people are supposed to get us to that point. What happens to them if they don't, uh, if they don't do it on time? There's two things. One, there's an item called liquidated damages, damages that's in the contract. It's an estimation of uh, daily costs uh, for our our people ejemplo, to still be up there and managing the work, uh, it's considerably estimated at $5,000 a day. And probably more uh, significantly, and what we didn't talk about earlier, is that um, each payment that we make, we make monthly payments to the contractor based on the amount of work they've done. We retain 10% of that payment, and that's not released until they're completed with the work. So if this is a $100 million contract, there's a $10 million prize at the end that they don't get until they complete. So there's a huge incentive for them to complete on time, and in fact, um, we've given this contractor a year to do that, and they, they have committed, they've, they've shown this initial schedule that they're going to make that. So we, but that $10 million, if they don't finish on time, and, but they still did the work late, they would still get that $10 million. Right, but there's obviously interest that's piling up that they're not getting and all that. So I also ask you another question, what's our penalty? The Department of Water and Power, the, the people of Los Angeles, what's our penalty per day if we don't finish on time? If we don't finish on time just because we couldn't get the construction done on time, things slowed up or whatnot, it's, it's upwards of fifty, sixty thousand dollars a day. So we may be facing seen fifty, sixty thousand dollars a day, Entonces, yet the people we're depending on to actually do the work, the most we can find them is ten dollars a day. Five thousand dollars. Uh, excuse me, five thousand right. feels like ten bucks a day. Dollars. Sorry about that. Why did we limit ourselves to only require them give them that incentive of only five thousand dollars a day? Looking at what we may face. Well those those we've had a series of, of um, deadlines throughout the phase of the project and we've we've found that um, we've been able to manage the contracts well, the contractors we have are competent and uh, there's not much risk that we've incurred. We've always met every deadline. Um, and no uh, if you put too high of a number in, it's kind of a business decision that the, the contractors will kind of pad their price to pay for that. Basically, you're shifting the risk, and we, we just, we'd rather split the risk the way we have and work harder to manage the project to make sure it's on time. Just a business decision. Now, when it comes to being on time, there are safeguards in this contract that require them to report to us, require them to let us know what's going on on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis, correct? And we have people there to monitor that daily. Okay, are you ready to come to the Commerce Committee, basically the City Council Policy Committee, and give us updates as we request? Yes, sir. Okay, what kind of delay would there be on that information? Would it be a three-month delay from the actual actions and letting us know what's going on, or is that the kind of thing that you can let us know within five or ten days of the actual uh, real-time actions? Well, uh, they get paid monthly and, and each month we, we, we calc up how bueno, much progress that they've made so as we have that information monthly or, or we could we could plot um, progress even uh, week to week. We have weekly construction meetings and we, we determine progress, but month to month is probably the best way. Okay. I just wanted to let you know that uh, Council Member Parks and I are working on a motion to perhaps require an independent review, not an internal review from the department, which is apparently what the board had requested, uh, but perhaps an internal, uh, an external review, uh, not only of what's going on, but also to even delve deeper into the technologies that have been applied to see if we're going to continue with that because 
solamente con respecto a la tecnología antes de continuar con esto, porque es importante que usted sepa, the road. They le deje saber a la gente que estas 29 miles, millas, quizás no sea el fin, sino ellos pueden over, añadir 3 millas más, 10 yes, millas más, 10 yes, millas más, um, hasta que sepa, nosotros tenemos muchas provisiones requeridas por el gobierno federal, measure if other areas open up and what the city yes, agreed to back in 98 that it would be our problem forever so there's a methodology in their plan on how they might assess more square miles every year so I just want to remind everybody the original estimates were 120 million dollars for 22.5 square miles or so that adds up to about 5 to 6 million dollars a square mile to date uh, when you put it all together we're spending anywhere between 10 to 11 million dollars a square mile that's the reason why I think it's important that we not be shy about being honest cuadrada. about our evaluation sí, to find out what we've done, no pena what we're doing, and especially if we're required to do more. If we hecho, can do it cheaper, we better haciendo. figure out how to do it cheaper si and actually do it that way. Y si podemos hacer más barato, hacerlo más barato y hacerlo de esa manera. Thank you, Mr. Gracias, gracias, señor uh, presidente. Appreciate uh, you being here and certainly uh, the explanation you gave uh, recently in the office. The one issue that I'm concerned about was the area. Uh, an understanding there's a need to stop the dust, and we certainly are getting better marks. But the area of the irrigation where we are actually appears to be mandated to use perfectly good drinking water for irrigation when we have access to another water source that is not available for water, for drinking water, and and it's going to cost us, if I remember the number, something in the neighborhood of like 20 million dollars. And I'm just concerned as to how we can, as part of this agreement, es, es que move on that issue because eventually uh, that's going to uh, impact uh, the ratepayers. Uh, and este acuerdo, we know there's a shortage of water uh, uh, in this region that we live in the desert. And I'm just wondering how do we address that as we move forward on región. this issue? Well, there's really two ways. What, um, what we're also able to really negotiate with the local area district up there is a method by which um, if, if we can prove to them that we can get the same amount of dust control with less water, um, that, that we'll be able to do so. And so there is a, a, a strong likelihood and, and a good hope that we can actually do the same for, for less money, less water in the future. That, the other thing is, um, is that there is also groundwater underneath that lake, um, probably not enough to service all the needs, but there's a good amount there, and that's probably our next step. Um, what I've told people, what we're doing today at Owens Lake is probably not the same thing we're going to be doing in 20 years. There's going to be some person's job, a group of people's job, to always do Owens Lake better, cheaper, faster kind of thing. I, I would just like to see if we make that a priority because we know the sensitivity of water rate increase and a variety of things. We know the sensitivity of shortage of water, uh, that we not knowingly waste good drinking water uh, on something that can be done otherwise and that we look for those ways as soon and as early as possible. And uh, certainly uh, uh, with Mr. Cardenas, we're, been, we're looking at a motion because, because primarily because of the cost and the fact that this has escalated so uh, high above what our intended or original cost that we do think there's a need of an external audit to tell us what we shouldn't do in the future or what we did in the past to cause this to escalate. And so uh, that's something I think that we are obligated to do uh, just on the, the amount of money that's being expended. But if you could find a way to resolve that other issue, not only because of the cost, the $20 million, but just seems to be wasting good drinking water. Yeah, we've, we, we have a separate item um, that, that we fund uh, for projects and efforts to reduce both water and O&M costs, you know, labor costs out there. And we've already been fairly successful in reducing the total number of people that we need to have up there. And, uh, uh, and the total amount of equipment and parts and whatnot we have to replace. We're already making, even before we're done, already making improvements. So Thank appreciate you, any help we can get. Thank you. Ms. Hahn. Thank you, Mr. President. And we had a very thorough discussion of this in our, our Commerce Committee. And I was one of those that supported us asserting our jurisdiction so that we could delve into this a little bit more. And, and frankly, it's just such, the whole problem is so, um, troubling. Uh, we, really, when you read the entire history of Owens Lake, I mean, it was 1913 that uh, we, we began draining that lake, and here we are today still trying to mitigate uh, the dust 
that happened as a, as a result of, of our draining that lake. Uh, and it, it's unfortunate to read that when we started this, it, it, we were told, uh, not we, but uh, a previous commission and a previous council and our previous general manager, that it, that it was going to cost about $120 million. To have us go into this $415 million you know, end is really troubling. Uh, but it looks like we're up uh, against a deadline. I had a couple things. One is I'm interested to hear you talk about that $10 million that we can withhold because that's the exact question I asked you in commerce. Right. I said, isn't there a way we can withhold money and then give it as an incentive? And you said no. So I was very surprised. Yeah, I, I remembered once <laughs> once I left and I, and I said, I bet that would have been because exactly was, what you wanted to hear. That's specifically yeah. what I wanted to hear and was we, and we, we had that authority to withhold some money as opposed to just penalizing them, did we have a way to withhold the money? So you're telling me yes. And that's exactly why it's there for. Incentive but I for still think, uh, colleagues, and uh, I'll probably go ahead and, and, and vote for this, but I think in the future, when we look at what we can penalize or withhold from a contractor versus what we, the city, will be penalized um, or fined if we don't meet a deadline, those things ought to be equal. And we ought to begin looking at that when we look into contracts and uh, uh, you know other ki kinds of financial arrangements, because it doesn't make any sense for us uh, to be really held holding the bag more than our vendor or contractor. So unfortunately, it doesn't sound like there's anything we can do about that now. But we ought to really pay attention to that in the future and make sure that those are balanced, that whatever we're going to be fined or whatever, we're going to have a penalty. It ought to be the same for, for the vendor or contractor. We ought to work that in the RFPs, and if people don't want to participate in that or feel like that's too big of a risk, well, uh, th then I think that's something we ought to take into account. Let me have you explain for my colleagues, because um, I think one of the other issues that I was concerned about was with this um, Barnard construction that there was some opposition to us uh, giving them this contract based on some previous labor law violations. And could you tell me uh, what our investigation came back with when we investigated that and how can we be assured as we go forward uh, that there will not be uh, any more of those uh, labor law violations uh, being done uh, on this site with this contract? Well, we've had uh, three different contractors working for us in the different phases, and Barnard has had uh, three previous contracts. The first two, there were labor violations that were assessed against them. Um, some of those were assessed by the department. Uh, we have a provision in our, uh, excuse me? Um, they were not uh, kind of willful, you know, holding money back. It was, um, if you believe the uh, what was coming back from the state. It was more administrative things that they didn't mark, mark up things right in their sheets that they should have been sending to the state and whatnot. Um, they made the uh, employees whole. They paid whatever fines that they had to have. On the third contract they had with us, we essentially got these same um, complaints. And what the contractor committed to do and uh, what we committed to do is more vigilantly look at how they're paying their employees. And as a result, they had zero violations on the third contract and they have made the same commitment to us basically to have an on-site person there to look after these human resource types issues. Will we be also monitoring that? We are monitoring that. We uh, provide uh, and we work actually uh, alongside the same folks that protested um, the contract. Uh, there's actually two different labor watchdog groups that we work with on a continual basis to make sure that um, uh, that all of the provisions that the state requires for labor laws are, are complied with. Well, co colleagues, again, I, th I think we're in a, in a troublesome uh, position, uh, but it looks like uh, we, we really have to go forward with this to make sure that we meet our deadline. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I, I will really support my colleague, Councilman um, Cardenas, in you coming back to the Commerce Committee on a regular basis uh, and giving us um, really regular reporting on how this is going. I also want to be included in that. Um, an update on uh, what's going on, particularly with the workers and the labor laws, um, and also an update on uh, you know the relations between the DWP employees and these contractors, because it sounds like there was a lot of allegations, there was a lot of tension, and uh, first and foremost, we want to make sure that our DWP employees, uh, you know, are have an open, transparent way to talk to us and to make complaints about what's going on out there. Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank uh, Chairman Cardenas for his thorough questions and 
brought all the right issues up, and, and for Vice Chair Janice Hahn for the labor issues and what you brought up. Um, what is this audit that the Commission is looking at? What aspect of this are they doing an audit on? Um, the, the Commission actually asked us to do and, and directed us to do several, several audits. Um, the two that are uh, germane to, to this uh, project are we are going to be doing audits of all the construction uh, contracts relating to the Owens Dry Lake and there will be performance type audits where we will be making sure that the right things were done for the right price and, and the right kind of authorizations were in place. The other uh, relevant audit is that we will be auditing uh, again on a performance as well as financial basis all of the contracts that we've had with the, the firm of CH2M Hill. They've, they've played a major role in this. They have been our, our science uh, advisors and our, our designers and construction managers on this. So we will be doing a thorough audit of uh, the, this current contract with CH2M, as, CH2M Hill as well as the previous contracts that we've had with them on other projects in the department. So when that audit is done, you'll bring it to the Commerce Committee and we'll get an appreciation of it as well. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now just recap the history for me. When did we first say we needed to do the dust mitigation in Owens Valley? Rich, you want to? Yeah, the history goes uh, probably way back to the early 70s and uh, that's when the district was formed. Uh, primarily, they wanted to look at our pumping activities up in the Owens, Owens Valley raise, lower the water table, vegetation dies off, you get dust. It wasn't until the uh, 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 China Lake Naval Air Weapons uh, Station up there really got involved because dust comes over, 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 off of Owens Lake and disrupts their operations. They like to fly over Owens Lake and play games and things like that. Um, and there was um, really kind of fast forward then into uh, the 97-98 the, uh, uh, State Senator Pete Knight and Tom Hayden uh, put together a bill to basically force the district to order the department and the city to do um, dust control and that the local district would be able to um, uh, control our operations. In other words, force us to put aqueduct water on the lake. So really it was kind of in, in that context the city said, well, we'd rather cut our own deal. And uh, although that, that bill passed uh, the, the Senate, Governor Pete Wilson, um, vetoed it because the city strongly disagreed with that. But that's kind of the backdrop of how we got to the point where we were in 98, that we wanted to cut our own deal and kind of enforce our own fate if we could. And then in 98 we cut a deal and how many acres did we think we had a deal with and what was the price tag then? It was, um, we agreed to a, a schedule that we would do a number of square miles every year up to a point in 2003, uh, that was 22 and a half square miles roughly. Um, and the, the city agreed to basically an, an open deal that in 2003 that the final number would be determined. And, um, and once that was, that's when we locked into our, our total cost. And that open deal in 2003, uh, then you, you, you mentioned that it might be as much as $415 million to complete the project. Correct. So that was a couple of three years ago. Yes. And, and now we're at 29 miles? Uh, the, the, the final order is 29.8 square miles. Do you think there'll be more miles? Uh, as I told the, the council is here about 18 months ago that we should be under no illusion that we won't have to do some amount in the future. I can't tell you what that is. I don't think it's a, a significant amount. I don't think it's, I obviously don't think it's double or even half of what we've done. But there's a handful of miles that we're going to have to do over a, a, a period of time. And the last question is, if we don't act today, and I'm going to urge my colleagues to act today, uh, explain this finding. Um, Procedure. Okay, there's really kind of three sets of fines. There's just the fine that goes along with um, not not fulfilling our commitment, fulfilling the order. Uh, there's fines from both the Air District and from the uh, federal EPA. Those combined can be up to $50,000. There's then also um, criminal and civil uh, fines that can go against an actual individual if they if action is taken. That you that you know will result in an in a uh, an unhealthful condition. So, um, worst case scenario, the council says we're not going to do it, and they know that by not not passing this contract that we we can't fulfill it. And we know if we can't fulfill our commitment by December that there's going to be dust. Then there's um, up to like seventy five thousand to a million dollars at an individual plus jail time up to a year. So it gets serious if there's willful intent. 
Mm -hmm. And we'll go forward, I hope, uh, my colleagues and approve this, but uh, Councilwoman Hahn's point about the workers, which is central to all of us, there's been some press coverage suggesting issues, and you'll keep the committee informed on where those issues are being worked out. Right, and I, I meet with them regularly. I was just up there on Monday talking with them and trying to get, you know, make sure I'm at the same sense of what their frustration is, so working through those issues with them. Good, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Parks. He passes. Mr. Cardenas. I need to ask a question because uh, we're going to have a lot more discussions about this and this is going to be a lot more involved and a lot more interaction on this matter of Owens Valley and this dust mitigation than perhaps the departments had with, the, with this council in the past. How long have you two been working on this issue? I was brought on uh, after the agreement was signed by the city, so 98. You were brought on at about 1998? Yeah. Okay. And I've been working on it about two years when I uh, moved into the executive office when Jerry Gavey was making his retirement plans. So okay. I've only been on about two years. All right. The reason why I asked that question is because it's going to be very important because we're going to be asking real-time questions, wanting real-time answers, wanting real-time numbers and real-time expenditures. Uh, because what's happened in the past on this matter is too many people have been pointing toward what happened in 1998 or what happened in 2000 as if there's nothing we can do about it. And the fact of the matter is we can't have that. Uh, we can't have an estimate of $120 million to grow to $400 million and us just looking at each other as though there's really not much we can do. Uh, I want to acknowledge we don't have control over the local air quality management districts or we don't have control over the feds. We don't have control over them, but we do have control over who we contract. We have control about how we spend our money and we have a responsibility to make sure that we spend our money efficiently and effectively. And when it comes to engineering, there's more ways than one to, to skin a cat. And in this particular case, we are going to have to reevaluate and continue, continue to evaluate the methods that we've applied to see if we're going to continue to use those methods, especially if we know, well, one thing's for sure, that air quality district is very, very likely not going to leave us at 29.8 miles. I would agree. Very likely not. That's correct. We're going to have at least one square mile or more. And we're talking about easily six, seven million dollars a square mile or more the way we are applying ourselves today. So the reason why I emphasize that is we're not done. 415 million is not the end of the road. And also we've been, I think Ms. Hahn mentioned that the O&M in committee, we have as much as $40 million a year, give or take, in uh, main, maintaining this 30 square miles, miles or so, apart from the infrastructure of the $415 million. So we need to be monitoring this, we need to be mindful of our responsibilities, and we need to make sure that, that we're willing to answer those honestly those questions honestly, and they're going to be tough questions, and we shouldn't have to worry about where the chips fall, especially when somebody's only been here two years. Decisions were made a while ago. If they were bad decisions, let's get off those bad decisions and move on with good decisions because we're spending approximately 8 to $10 million a square mile to date. We can't continue to do that unless we absolutely are sure that there's no other way around it. I wholeheartedly agree. Thank you. Mr. Reyes. As Council Member Carlos was speaking, he spoke about different ways in which you can skin a cat approaches. Um, treated water, does that have any role in this in terms of dealing with our systems or filtering back in aquifers or just a very generic, very broad brush point of view? Does that have any role in how we deal with our systems and how we, because we're spending a lot of money on treated water, correct? And we end up spilling out into the waterways and ends up in the ocean. Is that correct? Well, the, the water we're putting on Owens Lake is just the raw aqueduct water, so it's not treated water. Right. So we don't have to pay that expense. Right. So the I, it, let me clarify, Councilman. Are you talking about uh, treated wastewater from the city oh, okay. and possible uses for that? I mean, I know what a f uproar that caused 15, yeah. 20 years ago. Right. But uh, that was 15, 20 years ago. We have whole new issues of dollars and infrastructure and technology and a lot of good stuff that has happened since then. Is that something that we just 
dismissed or is that even in the formula or any way of analyzing our issues? It, it really isn't and, and the, the main reason is because of location. I mean, we're, we're many, many miles north of the city of LA and we're also at a higher elevation. So you'd have to build a pipeline and, and pump wastewater back up But don't you have lake. towns and cities around the area of, of, of any significant, no, no not, critical mass? Not really. You and can they, tell how informed I am about the population <laughs> base there. So. It's, yeah. it's literally in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Kind of I just, again. Good thinking, though. No. Grasping for straws. <laughs> we grasping for straws. Yeah. All right. We, we, we are going to be, as Councilman Park said, though, I think this idea of uh, pumping the groundwater, uh, that's, that's saline groundwater that's not really usable for any local uses, that is going to be one of the more promising things. And, and we're going to be pursuing that very aggressively. Great. Okay. Thank you. Other members wishing to speak on this item? Mr. Cardenas. Council President Padilla, I just wanted to remind my colleagues and, and the public that we sent it to the full council uh, with uh, no recommendation so we could have this discussion and we can all be much more aware of where we're at. The fact of the matter is an informational meeting was held on Monday. A lot of rhetoric flew. There was actually uh, a uh, newspaper article that mentioned that there's problems in Los Angeles and, and they don't, may, might not know what they're doing or what have you. So it is critical that we move forward at this time. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, Council Member Parks is, is working on a motion and we're working on it together to try to tighten up our reviews and how we're going to actually evaluate this on a much more timely basis. Uh, but uh, today, uh, I can't say enough how regretfully uh, it is that we should move forward. Uh, but we should be methodical and careful and monitor this as closely as possible because, again, we're in the hands of other districts. We're in the hands of other people who have authority. They could demand of us. They could sue us. That's how this happened. We were threatened to go to court. It looked as though we could, it, the chips could fall here or there. It could be much more expensive or it could go very well for us. But the bottom line is, for those of you who don't realize it, uh, Northern California doesn't look upon Los Angeles very fondly or very kindly. Uh, and many of those judges and people making those decisions uh, unfortunately have a perspective that we don't, that we don't uh, endear toward ourselves here in Los Angeles. So with that, uh, I want to recommend that we move forward with this and that we put the, that we put the proper uh, uh, aspects together of the review so that we can actually be responsible amongst ourselves and whatever goes wrong, if anything does in the future, we have ourselves to look at. Thank you. Okay. I believe we're ready for a vote. Madam Clerk, please open the roll. Please close the roll and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. Item 53 is approved. Next item, please. Next item is item number 67, and that was called social by Council Member Cardenas. And we also have a card in item 67. Let's call forward Sylvia Hawkins. Uh, good morning, everyone. On number, item number 67, uh, I would like to say uh, what was just spoken a moment ago it's concerning dispatch out of state connection. Therefore, leaving these sewer lines, pipes, wiring disconnected is one way of winning the Hawk War 8 and Corona military war. This state and 12 other states, north, south, east, and west, must be nuclear bombed under. Now, our animals will have a place and resting place for mating and feeding the public without human beings and animal people destroying them and killing them before time for their destructive or selfish game of destruction. I am 97% positive of the reason why we are running out of water during the last two years, and that is because it has been stolen. And Miss Janet Hine basically know where it is stolen in what state. But we will stick to Russia and Alaska. Thank you very much. Thank My you. name is Miss Sylvia Lenny Hawkins. Thank you very much. This includes public comment on item 67. Mr. Cardenas. Thank you, Council President Padilla. Uh, I wanted to take a moment to announce that this motion has to do with holding on November 16th, 2005, the council meeting at 6.30 p.m. Uh, at the Van Nuys City Hall. Uh, 
This is the Van Nuys City Hall that's been refurbished. This is the City Hall in the San Fernando Valley that I think people are going to be very, very impressed with uh, the work that was done and the respect that has been given to the Van Nuys community and the San Fernando Valley community. And hopefully, I want to also thank uh, Council, uh, Councilman Greg Smith for his motion uh, to have meetings outside of the City Council, perhaps as frequent as once a week, twice a, a month, uh, or maybe even at least once a month, much more often than we have today. And it's very likely that this is going to be a very constant venue for having meetings in the San Fernando Valley. It's very central. It's in the Van Nuys area. And I just wanted to say thank you, Greg Smith, for that motion. And uh, hopefully we'll see it soon. But this is going to be the inaugural meeting of the new uh, City Hall of the Van Nuys community, the new council chambers in the Van Nuys community for the San Fernando Valley. So we welcome everyone uh, to be there. That's uh, November 16th at 6.30 p.m. in the Van Nuys City Hall, uh, our building, the, the building that belongs to the people of Los Angeles. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cardenas. If there's nothing further on this item, Madam Clerk, please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. Next item, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a thought on that. Mr. Cardenas, uh, could you direct the uh, uh, Department of Neighborhood Council Neighbor empowerment to make sure all the neighborhood councils in the valley know about this. I mean, just make it be aggressive because this is a great thing. I know you complimented Mr. Smith, and I know Ms. Hahn worked out on previously in your efforts right now. Because I just think there's somewhat of a, a need to disconnect, and we could maybe connect a little more. Okay. So thank you. you. My office will definitely let the department know. Okay. Next item, please. Uh, Mr. President, do you wish to clear the desk before going into closed session? Let's do housekeeping. Council has motions for posting and referral. Motion shall be posted and referred. And that clears the desk for closed session. Okay. Uh, in conformance with California law, the council will now adjourn into closed session. Sergeants, please clear the chambers. Madam Clerk, uh, next item, please. Uh, first item before Council is item number 68, and that's in the Wind First bankruptcy, and that's uh, the trustee will pay the city 100000 and the city will withdraw and release its claim. Please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. Forthwith, please. Next item. Next item is item number 69, and that's settlement in the case of Aurelio Perez Zaffa versus City of LA, and that's in the amount of $200,000. Please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved as well. Forthwith, please. Next item. Next item is a workers' comp claim, William Saylor versus City of Los Angeles, and that's in the amount of 108445 Please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved forthwith. Next item. Next item is 71, and that's in the case of uh, Arthur Coleman versus City of Los Angeles in the amount of $200,000. Please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes, one no. Okay, that is approved forthwith. Next item. Next item is item 73 in the case of Ricky Bernard Parker versus City of Los Angeles, and that's in the amount of 805000 Please open the roll, close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes, 1 no. That is approved as well. Forthwith. Next item. Last item before council is item 74 in the case of Ultimar Inc. versus City of LA, and that's uh, overpayment in a business tax, and that's in the amount of $425,000. Please open the roll, close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 13 ayes. That is approved. Forthwith. And Next that clears item. the desk, Mr. President. Okay. Colleagues, that's the end of our agenda today. Do we have any announcements? Mr. Parks? Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to go f uh, forthwith on 24. And also, uh, we inadvertently deferred 39. 
uh, because uh, it's a water franchise as opposed to an oil and gas, and we need to uh, move that forward. If we reconsider it. Okay, let's open the roll on reconsideration. Close the roll. Tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. Okay, and uh, Mr. And, Parks. And the request. matter is back before council. Okay, that's yeah, back that before was just an We misread the material. It should be uh, the franchise uh, ordinance that we're waiting for is for gas and oil, not water. That's difficult. Okay, you. and with that correction, hey, let's reopen the roll, <coughs> close the roll, and tabulate the vote. 12 ayes. That is approved. Next item, uh, or other announcements today? Members, Mr. Rosendahl. Uh, that the Committee um, of Education and Neighborhoods uh, would be meeting at 2.30 today, not 2 o'clock. Mr. Parks. Uh, just a, a final notice that on uh, today at 5 to 8 is the final EIR meeting for the uh, Expo line at 5 to 8 p.m. in the Wallace Annenberg building at the uh, Exposition Park and also on Wednesday, November the 30th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Healthy Parks, Healthy Communities Training Workshop is uh, being held at the Community Coalition 8101 South Vermont, and they asked uh, RSVP at 213-380-4233. Thank you. Other announcements? Mr. LaBonge. Yeah, uh, as we all know, Friday is Veterans Day. It was the day, first Armistice Day, which was uh, dated back in 1919, the end of World War I, on the 11th day of the 11th month at the 11th hour when that peace treaty, and now it's a day to honor our veterans. Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills at 11 o'clock will have a program which the public is invited to, and that's an extremely special day, so I wanted to recall that. Also, members, I think I'd like to thank the people of Los Angeles who voted yesterday, especially those who voted for measure Y to help uh, build our schools. And I hope finally I'll get the track fixed at good old John Marshall High, uh, thanks to that bond, which is uh, the smallest track in the city of Los Angeles. So thank all those who participated in all levels of government for that. And, uh, on, uh, and if I may just salute our, our veterans who joined us all on this Friday. Thank you, Mr. LaBonge. Mr. LaBonge, do you have a few laps around that track in your day? Yeah, Mr. President, just real quickly, anybody who moves in the neighborhood, when you run around the track at Marshall, you, it takes four laps to do a mile, usually at most tracks at every high school. Well, at Marshall, because it's such a short track, it's five, so people think they run the world's fastest time, and they, <laughs> they love it. They just think it, then they figure it out. So. <laughs> Other announcements? Ms. Hahn? No? If, Mr. Rosendahl. Yeah, I just wanted, uh, as... Um, uh, Mr. LaBonge had said Veterans Day, and Greg Smith and I are veterans around the horseshoe. Um, and my goal uh, with this Veterans Day is not only to preserve the veterans' property for veterans only in my district, the campus there, but to work with the homeless veterans. We have about 18,000 homeless veterans throughout the LA metro area, and my dedication in the next year will be how we get the services of Prop 63 drill down into uh, helping um, the homeless vets. So for all veterans. And uh, two final announcements. One is that uh, to help celebrate Veterans Day and commemorate the uh, contributions of our veterans, uh, we're having our second annual uh, San Fernando Valley Veterans Day Parade uh, at 11 o'clock on Friday, November 11th, beginning in Mission Hills, ending in Pacoima at Ritchie Valence Park. Uh, along Laurel Canyon Boulevard. We hope to see you all out there and uh, also to help uh, commemorate Veterans Day. This council will stand in recess this Friday. There will not be a regular meeting of the city council this Friday. Our next meeting will be next Tuesday. Mr. Cardenas. Thank you, Council President uh, Badia, and thank you for putting on that parade. Um, one of the things I'd like to note about that parade, I hope you don't mind, is that when we showed up last year, um, the only people allowed in the parade are veterans. No politicians, nobody's dog or horse or what have you. It's a parade dedicated to those men and women who have served our country, and I think it's only fitting that it had commenced that way and it continued that way. So I'd like to thank you and uh, Congressman Berman 
for making that uh, Veterans Day parade long overdue, but now in the San Fernando Valley, and I think it's going to happen every year after as well. Speaking of other events, uh, on, at 7 p.m. at the Marvin Browdy Center in the patio, we're going to be having our third annual candlelight vigil for those people who would like to commemorate and, and memorialize their veterans and their fallen family and friends who have served this country. Again, it's at 7 p.m. this Friday, November 11th in Van Nuys at the Marvin Browdy Center in the patio. And we welcome all. If it's raining or drizzling, don't worry. We have plenty of uh, space to accommodate either under the canopy or in the patio area. So hopefully it'll be good weather and we can properly have a candlelight vigil to commemorate and thank all the men and women who served this country and served us well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cardenas. If there's no further announcements, colleagues, we have adjourning motions. Please rise for adjourning motions. This one's sad. Ms. Hahn. Thank you, members. I'd like us to adjourn our meeting today in, in the memory of uh, little Kyla Rose Skefich, who passed away on Sunday. She was only four years old. And uh, she was the daughter of longtime Harbor Division police officer and a San Pedro resident, Alma Skefich. Um, Kyla became ill on Friday and was taken to the hospital, and she was suffering from meningitis. And unfortunately, she passed away two days later. She's survived by her mother, her father, Jim, and her twin brother. There is a viewing schedule for tonight uh, from 6 to 8 at McNerney's Mortuary, and the funeral mass is tomorrow at noon at Mary Star of the Sea. In lieu of flowers, the family has requested donations to Brighter Day School or Miller Children's Hospital in Long Beach. It's always sad to lose a loved one, but particularly difficult when it's a child. Other tributes? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Thank you all very much. This meeting is adjourned.